Hi there everyone, welcome back. We've got an expedition film here at the Royal Society. We've talked about these before. This one is labelled Sea Lacanth film. Yeah, I'm very excited by this one. Keith, what is a sea lacanth? A sea lacanth is what was termed at the time when this film was made, a fossil fish. So it's one that scientists knew from the fossil record, but thought it had become extinct. Everything changed. There was an amazing discovery. What happened, Keith? Well, in the 1930s, a museum curator in South Africa was walking in a fish market and saw something unusual. And that unusual thing, after a bit of research, turned out to be a coelacanth. So the coelacanth, only known as a fossil since the Cretaceous period, I believe, suddenly was found to be a living fish still yeah, in the ocean. That's right. So, so Marjorie Courtney Latimer, who's the person who discovered it, fantastically got it named after her. Uh, so uh, it was her discovery and, and a fantastic thing. Now the Royal Society wasn't going to miss out on this action. So we have reams and reams of paper here associated with this expedition that was launched to go and find themselves a sea lacanth out That's there in, right. the, in yes. the Indian Ocean. Well, the, we've got what looks like a holiday brochure. So these are the Comoros Islands in the Indian Ocean, which is where they thought the sea lacanth would be found. Scientists never change. They're always a little bit partial to doing science. Nice, nice warm places, yep. yeah. But if we look through these papers, this is basically the boring bureaucratic side of things. We've got lots of things about travel insurance and who's paying for what and who's mm -hmm. going. And The equipment that they took with them is quite interesting. What they effectively took was a ship and, and a bit of fishing line. They were going to fish for these creatures. All right, so they were doing some good old-fashioned fishing. Here's where we come to the film because, thankfully for us, they filmed their trip and we can have a look at some of that footage now. I have here my uh, tablet device, Keith. So it looks like they're, uh, they're coming into land. Mm. So you can see the aeroplane wing and the, the island there. I don't think they're going to be able to film the fish from up there, that's for sure. No. All right, so these are sort of buildings and local people on the island. That's right. So they're, they're kind of exploring the environs. The key thing about the Coelacanth expedition was making friends with the locals because they did bring their own fishing equipment, but the guys who really knew what to do were the local fishermen. Local fishermen, you're about to find out, play a key role in this story. Mm. As I understand it, Keith, the Royal Society scientists weren't having a lot of success at first. That's right, and in fact they were quite a long way into the expedition and hadn't found a thing. They, they couldn't catch a coal, they couldn't find a sealer cans. They were doing some interesting science while they were there, but the main purpose of this expedition was to get one of these fish and their luck was out. That tallies pretty much with my experience of uh, fishing as well. So we've got a fisherman there. So they're basically just tying a rock to the line to sink it. Yeah. Uh, and that's how sophisticated the technique got. Ah, here we go. Now here's our first coelacanth. But this one's dead. They had seen many dead coelacanths before. So after their first discovery, they were looking for them in fish markets and so on. And they had seen this kind of creature before. Usually by the time scientists got their hands on it, these things had rotted down. They couldn't refrigerate them properly. They couldn't take proper samples from them. So the, the objective was to find one that was either as fresh as possible or still alive. Nobody had seen a living coelacanth. Not a handsome fish. No, it's, it's kind of rather brutally armoured, isn't it? And it, it looks quite a primitive creature. Oh, here we go. They're, they're articulating the jaws there by the mm. look of it. They're trying yep. to imagine it being alive at this point. Yep. God. It does have a very odd jaw construction, apparently, the coelacanth. So we still haven't seen a living one. And this is when something really interesting happens. Hmm. Here we have another folder. This says press and publicity. So this is after they've gotten back. And if we go to one particular article in here first, this is New Scientist. Spoiler alert here, there's a picture of the fish and look, it says there, the fossil that was caught alive. So they did catch a living fish. And they just managed to get one. Yeah. Before we show it to you, let's read the story of how it was caught because it's here in an article in New Scientist 1972 by Dr. Adam Lockett. It says that the expedition had made contact with several villages and the fishermen in these knew well of the prize that awaited them if they were able to provide a live fish. It was a bounty. There was a bounty, yeah. They, they'd very sensibly offered uh, quite a good reward. Okay. 
So at 2 a.m. on the 22nd of March, Mahdi Youssef Kar, a 63-year-old fisherman from the village of Iconi, was fishing from his pirogue some 600 meters from the shore when he had a bite. I love it. It's like he's, yeah. th this is not like a scientific article. He had a bite. They're like giving us the yeah, drama. That's, or... that's absolutely right. Yeah. He was fishing at 165 meters depth. So these are, are quite deep creatures. And during the day, they tend to hang out in caves and things. And he happened to be uh, using a piece of tuna as bait. The fish he brought to the surface was a coelacanth. And having caught two in the past, he knew the importance of his catch at once. Straight away, he brought his catch, still very much alive, to the shore. There, the village chief was alerted, and he went himself by taxi to rouse the sleeping scientists. I love the idea of the village chief being sent to wake up the scientists in the yeah. middle of the night. Guys, yeah. we've got your fish. Drama. Yeah. Let's just eke out the suspense for a bit longer, because here we also have in this folder, in a colour prints here, we have some photos of the living fish. There it is. I think it might be quite deceased by that stage. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. yeah, maybe you're right. I probably couldn't get it to stay still like that. Never fear, we will show you the fish alive because it is in the Royal Society Expedition film. There it is, still alive in some kind of tub or container. Mm -hmm. There we go. See, look at the very slow moving creatures. They're, they're drift feeders. They just go with the current and just position themselves accordingly using a, a quite specialised fin arrangement. Can you imagine how excited the scientists must have been? Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is a real first. In a way, it's, it's kind of exciting, but the idea of, kind of marine conservation hadn't really got going in the 40s, 50s and 60s and, and in the 70s when this was shot. So I kind of feel sorry for the animal, really. Of course, this is a super, super endangered fish now, mm. but that's not because of scientists going there and taking them out one by one. They're actually falling victim to a lot of trawling. That's right, so yeah. If that makes you sad, this next bit's going to make you even more sad, Keith, because after taking pictures and observing it and poking and prodding and finding out what they could, mm. they took the logical next step. That's right. And here they're, they are doing the science. So they're dissecting down the fish. They had an incredibly detailed plan of exactly what they wanted to extract from the fish and who they were going to give it to, to try to explore every little bit of the, the anatomy and physiology of the coelacanth. And, oh, and a bit of little interlude with a live fish. <laughs> You know, like a wine glass. Yeah, it's just, it looks like a tiny little puffer fish of some kind, doesn't it? So there we go. Coelacanth found alive. What happened next? Is there anything else we should look at here? Yeah, so as I say, they did dissect it down. So we have some information about how they distributed the creatures. So here's one of these distribution lists. And again, this is for blood distribution. You can see exactly what they're doing from the point of taking a syringe of blood, producing microscope slides, putting some in collection tubes, some with anticoagulant, and then the amount of specimen that they're distributing to each individual researcher really all around the world. So we see here all the yeah. scientists and the people who are going to be given samples. It's amazing. This is obviously such a commodity, Keith. It's like moon rocks or something. Well, that's exactly right. Does the Royal Society still do things like this, Keith? Do they still send people off on these adventures to look for fish? And We will give grants to scientists who want to do field work, that kind of thing. But the days when we would hire a ship and go sailing on the high seas for something, that's gone. But I quite like the idea of resuscitating the idea of a Royal Society research vessel. Get some good dives in. Maybe you and I could um, like. Well, maybe. I think so. HMS <laughs> objectivity. HMS objectivity. <laughs> I like it. Oh, you've given me an idea now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd taken some films over which were labelled and they looked like they'd be really interesting and actually what it was was a tractor documentary or some weird Swedish comedy. So it wasn't always science related. I had a, a call of all the rubbish. I mean, tractor documentary sounds all right. No, not so much. So I'm totally up. I'm totally up for a tractor documentary. <laughs>